happy make people sad make people frightened laugh and cry and all the kind all the different kinds of um, emotion every person has to express themselves in a certain way and I feel film seeing as though it's visual it has sound it has all these other elements that you can put together to make your vision come alive I think it's the best platform for me to express myself uh, is um, one who is able to tell a story using pictures and words. Very simple. Personal definition of film would be a language of picture and sound. It's about human life, it's about human experiences, it's about you, it's about me. Film is about how we build the world in our frame of reference. I have this one philosophy about film and about living, that everything in life has a story and it's about us bringing our story forward and film has a great way to do that. I think we could have done a lot more uh, because if anything I believe Zambians have the best stories, uh, whether it is you know, you know the struggles that are there uh, from independence, whether you're talking about the iconic figures, legends and myths, we have all of that. Uh, I think we have the best stories to tell and we're just not properly utilizing it. I think the film industry lately has slightly picked up, but um, I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done in the Zambian film industry. First of all, we need to support each other. Um, we need to be able to stand up and say, I'm going to watch a film that was done by uh, a Zambian and being able to pay for them and not um, getting pirated. The Zambian film industry is growing at a very fast pace, despite challenges that are to do with piracy and obviously lack of uh, support from the government. And also, Mingeri Palat, I think you know the guy that does most of the productions and also has been doing productions for Zambezi Magic. Um, Media365 as well is doing quite tremendous job in terms of production. Their the productions are really good. So I think we're growing. And, and, and the fact that DSTV decided to bring a channel that is able to support the film industry, I think that is also pushing us you know, towards working hard so that our films can be appreciated out there. So one of the problems, I think, we we lack film school. We don't want to invest in um, training of our actors and our actresses so that they can perform better to their best and display the film the way it should. It's a difference between someone who has been to school and someone who thinks they have an inherent ability to make films. There are certain things that people who have been to school understand that people who haven't would not. We don't have a school in the country that you can say it's strictly for arts, it's strictly for film in the country. They don't really understand what film is, what it involves, uh, I mean what is the duty of a director, what's the duty of a casting director and whatnot. People think just because most they, they, they are creative, yes, but they think just because they are creative, they can be able to realize their vision and make it come alive. It would really make a lot of difference if we had just an art school that's dedicated to people of creative arts. We're talking musicians, you know, actors, photographers, and so on, because these are the people that can build the film industry. Maybe, maybe even take a one-month course. 
yeah, all they need to do is actually gain the practical knowledge without just leaning on me, I'm creative and I can express myself and whatnot. They need to gain the technical knowledge. So they just say, I want to be a director. I want to be, I want to start my own production. And this is where we find, uh, when they start doing their own production, we find that one name appears in almost every, <laughs> every, you know, description of a movie. Actor, director, producer, one person is because they don't understand. We as filmmakers sometimes do not invest enough in what we want to come out of it. We don't want to invest in equipment. I think people just wake up and decide to make movies without realizing what message am I trying to bring up? What is the main goal? I, I don't think uh, there is enough investment in film. That's it. We don't put enough time, uh, we don't put enough resources, we don't put enough research into the types of films that we are making. To an extent, if we are not acting as professional as we want people to take us, we don't expect people to look at us at that angle or from that perspective. If we're going to be acting amateur about things, people will be taking us to be amateurs. Um, there is confusion in the house of filmmakers. So many, I'm actually part of the group on WhatsApp for um, the, the National Arts of Movie or Media Association and something like that, NAMA, if you guys know about it. When it comes to film associations, there are very, very few of those. And even those few, not very many people know about them. We are doing movies for, not for our consumers, we are doing movies for ourselves as filmmakers. And then you discover that when you launch a movie, the people that attend the movies are actors and actresses and directors, not the people that are supposed to consume the movie. And you're going to find that in there, everybody talks about doing things, everybody talks about we did this movie, we did that movie, but it just ends there, you know? It's like you do a movie for other actors to see, or it's like a musician playing music so that other musicians should also hear it. So you would be seated here and trying to make it in the industry and you don't even know where to go to, where to turn, and you just don't know how to go about making your, your film spread out and go out as it should. As far as I've seen, I don't think there's much support that is given to film. But we need to have um, a ministry specifically for art. I know we have that ministry, but I don't think a lot is being done to support the film industry and just the art industry itself. I do know that there was a policy that was supposed to be adopted or is it implemented by the different ministries, how that you know each ministry was supposed to sort of involve film or have some film department you know within their structures to sort of help uh, you know the communities around them understand what it is they do and the roles that they play uh, I don't know how far that has gone I heard this story about a year ago but I'm not sure how far it has gone in terms of implementation I don't think there is enough investment in film from both government and private entities if you look at Almost every film that has ever come out of Zambia, uh, talk about the likes of uh, Jesse Chisi, the short films, and uh, also um, Henry, Joe Sakala, and them, talk about those films that they've made. I don't think the government has ever invested in anything in to realize those people's visions. We need support from the government in terms of curbing piracy and also um, find a way of, you know, empowering us with funds, you know, where we lack uh, equipment, they can come in and help. You know, we can, we can, they can use the filmmakers to sell Zambia out there. You know, like, um, you as a director obviously have this big dream of selling Zambian stories. That is also a way of you know, of selling Zambia out there. In Africa, we know generations. We know Isidingo and other programs like Backstage and so on because they have those types of facilities that can support them. The government supports them in, the, in their art industry and they have schools where you can literally go and learn art. 
So if we have a scenario that's like that, we'll have such advantages. Nothing really is being done by the government. I don't think, I, I don't know much about what the government is doing behind the scenes, but I can't see it. From where I stand, it looks like they're doing nothing. The government is not doing anything. Considering that a huge number of our Zambian population, I want to say is illiterate, film has a way of bridging that gap. And I don't think that government has really realized you know, the potential to exploit that and use it to their advantage. If you look at certain types of cameras that people use to just shoot music videos in, not even going outside Africa, just South Africa, people use cameras that are worth $30,000, you know? How many people can afford to buy that on their own? You know, those are state-of-the-art type of cameras we are talking about. And if the government comes in, it's easy for them to buy us those things. It's easy for people to learn off institutional property. Society looks down on film making, I feel, because we want our kids to grow up and be doctors. We want our kids to grow up and be accountants and uh, presidents and everything else. But we look down on film and feel like it's a hobby. Society really does not support a Zambian film to an extent because there are people like uh, me who would very much enjoy seeing a good Zambian film. Very few people are willing to get up and say I'm going to buy an original um, copy of, of a film that's made by a Zambian. Very few of us are going to stand up and go to the cinema for it in the first place. You ask somebody on the, on the street about the Zambian film industry and about Zambian movies and they prefer watching international movies or Nigerian films. It's very difficult for a Zambian to watch a Zambian production or to go to the cinemas to watch Zambian production. Uh, mostly because they are used to watching Nigerians and also pirates. Pirates, they can get, they can walk in the streets and maybe as a friend and they'll just download or maybe they'll just get five for five quarter on the street. And then you see Nigerian movies, there are a lot of bad sounds and you can hear the sound of the movie, but they are selling because consumers are not interested on what sound is making noise, they're interested, how is the story going? Uh, very few of us are willing to pay for someone else's movie, someone else's film that was made by a, a Zambian. We always want it to be free and things like that. Just yesterday I saw a Zambian film being premiered in, in, in France at the Cairns and it, it received quite overwhelming, overwhelming support that cannot be received here, that it cannot be given here in Zambia. I think if if, if the filmmakers and the society could come together, then we can have you know, a situation where you have every week there's a, a film showing at the community school or a community hall, and then, then you have the right audience giving you right feedback. My favorite film is actually uh, a series that I've seen uh, most recently. It's called Fever. When the curtain falls. Uh, I'm not really a TV person. I, I like to watch my things on the internet. <laughs> yeah. I just so happened to catch um, a few episodes of Love Games. I'm um, watching about it. I think Red Bag would have to do it. Like banana was my favorite. From the way that they take, that they took their shots, um, you can see that they invested so much in equipment, and they had a crew that was. Um, they made it large enough for for to support every aspect of the film. I think the production was of high quality standard and. Just the story, the way they told the story itself, I think it was really good. And they really invested in equipment like um, cameras, you know, actors and everyone. everything was just on point. I so happened to be a proud owner of an original DVD of Love Games. And uh, it was very good. And I saw it because it was very good. I didn't think it was very good and then I saw it. No, because it was very good, it dragged me into seeing it. So yeah, Love Games is, is very good. Even though a lot of people, you know, 
talk about it in negative sense. I think I like the red bag because I feel it's 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 a Zambian thing. Zambians took time. I, I like it for the effort and you know, Zambians came and sat down and said, you know, let's try and bring up a story. And they tried to bring up certain small elements uh, about Zambian living, even though it was more or less a fictional film. But they tried to bring that up. The acting, the casting was nice. The, the combination of the characters was nice. My favorite was Jason and the girlfriends. And then the, the Madongo guy who used to, you know, you could feel that you're watching, you know, a movie. It could communicate to you, but the rest of the movies, trust me, you wouldn't want to watch. You start crying instead of celebrating. Well, I learned what to call the effect that I so love so much in film. The vertigo effect. <laughs> I've learned so much that um, someone that has not taken this class m might be might take for granted. I think it's after taking the film class that I got to appreciate, you know, the various aspects of film production. I enjoyed, yeah. um, let's see, being part of the production uh, that we did a short production at the end of the course just to show some of the skills that we learned from the film, from the course itself. We had to write down scripts, we had to film, we had to work with actors. So it was a good hands-on experience for me and it's something that I personally would like to take with me even as I go along. I have learned that we need to be able to be to take every part of film seriously. I've learned how to use the camera, how to Position it in a way that's going to make you think and feel a certain way. The best moments, I think, uh, just just the other week we were we were shooting uh, a short film. Uh, we it, it's a class project, class project assignment. So we were shooting one of those, and it was I got to see what exactly is involved in filmmaking, and it is a lot of work. Like nowadays, I can't just sit and watch a movie without thinking, wow. They had to do this and they had to do that. They had to hold the microphone for that long to get that show. How many takes did you have to go through in order to get that right? So I have a much more deeper appreciation for film than I did before. I really learned a lot from my teammates and then my, my classmates and the lecturer himself, Mr. Bela Zulu, and really that was a memorable experience. For me, I think it's the best course one could ever take. So, someone like me, I think it's the best course I have taken. Maybe followed by advertising, but film, film is great. <sighs> Make good films. I think reaching a point where filmmakers would be looked at as as people that can really add value to to society. I would really love to get to a point where. You know, we have one project that involves Zambian models, Zambian dancers, Zambian music artists, Zambian lyricists, Zambian poets, directors, and all that. We just decide to invest everything that we have in one particular project. I want to see film that even when an outsider watches, they'll be able to say, oh, so that's what happens in Zambia. This is what people live like in Zambia and this is who they are. For us to get creative and make good films, reach a standard where someone is looking at a Zambian film and say, yes, that's a Zambian film. I wish we could reach an extent where even before the first president dies, uh, we do just a movie about independence and you know, sell out Zambia on a better scale before the international guys come and do it for, for us. I was very upset when I saw a documentary about National Geographic, from National Geographic rather, talking about, you know, our Zambian myths and legends like the Nyami Nyami. I want people to be able to see the story behind what Zambia is as one um, nation. I feel the best person to tell a Zambian story is a Zambia. And I want our films to, you know, come out at that level and just be able to compete with others. But 
does not only make Hollywood films because the, the investors come from within. Just uh, recently, there was a film that was done. Is it in Uganda, Queen of Cadre? It's a Hollywood film that was filmed outside and is financed by enough multinational corporations uh, as well as Disney, which were the, the people that executed it. So I want to reach that level where you can make a movie as good as Hollywood. Well, some may seem it's a far-fetched dream, but I, I feel we can do it. I've seen myself to be one of the best script writers of uh, fiction and um, I'm seeing myself to be one of the great producers of something like this. Definitely. Trust, if I, if, I, if I could get away with not getting formal employment before I get there, I would do it. Like, I don't want to get a job. All I want to do is make things. Uh, I see myself becoming a very big filmmaker. Um, I know it's filmmaking involves quite a lot, you know, but I think as a DP, a director of photography, I think I see myself becoming very big at some point, maybe working, collaborating with international filmmakers, you know, which is possible. I, I see myself as a very big film director, even though right now I'm so big on compositing, but I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that's just a phase. First of all, I was a big uh, in e editing. Now I do a lot of after effects and a lot of compositing. Before you know it, I will be directing. I have done a, my fair share of filming, but ultimately what I want to do, I want to direct films. I see, I see myself in a position where I am able to make you, make the audience rather, um, feel what what kind of stories I'm, I, I want to, to put across. I think that I see myself growing and setting Zambia on the international, putting Zambia on the international map, on the map, so on the world map. I want to be the person that contributes to the changing, to the evolution of the Zambian industry taking it to great heights. I want them to be able to share these with um, their families and I also want to inspire other people to be able to take that leap to get into film because it is it, it, it is a, a very big um, risk. All I want to do is make films. Regardless of what kind of films, I want to make documentaries, I want to make maybe a bit of commercials. I'm ready to go out there and write scripts, I'm ready to go out there and start shooting and filming and directing. There are projects that are piled up and waiting for me to just get right into it. Okay, she made it. She received an award for it. She did this and she, a story that told so much and built such an impression. And I want to do that as well, no matter what it takes. I don't think I would pick one thing. I think I would, I would do some acting. I would be involved in some directing. I'll be director of photography and I think I would want it all, man. Apart from being the guy that moves around with the cables, of course. I, I want to see myself get to that point. I want people to, you know, look at me someday and say, that is Chola Chilumba, guy who was one of the people that contributed to the growth of the film industry. I don't want um, people in the next few years to say, ah, okay, I like film, but eh, I can't do it. It's it shouldn't be like that, so I want to be able to inspire people. I'll, I'll do great things for Zambia, because Zambia should be this way.